newest fully functional female robot finally revealed. One of the longest running themes in science fiction is the AI takeover. For a lot of people, this is the central trope tied with aliens in the genre, and that certainly appears to be the case when looking at science fiction movies. From iRobot to Terminator, we as a society are interested in the ethics of AI and how it will shape our futures. And to find out the transition of that into today's technology, welcome Sophia Robot. The term robot was coined in the 1921 play Rosumovi Universalni Roboti by Karel Chapak. But the central themes seen in the last 100 years can be seen before the term was coined. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein hints to the theme with Victor's fear that creating a wife for his monster could spell the doom for humanity should they reproduce. The word robot from RUR comes from the Czech word robota, meaning laborer or serf. The 1920 play was a protest against the rapid growth of technology, featuring manufactured robots with increasing capabilities who eventually revolt. The play begins in a factory that makes artificial people from synthetic organic matter. They are not exactly robots by the current definition of the term, they are living flesh and blood creatures rather than machinery and are closer to the modern idea of androids or replicants. They may be mistaken for humans and can think for themselves. They seem happy to work for humans at first, but a robot rebellion leads to the extinction of the human race. Chapek later took a different approach to the same theme in War with the Newts, in which non-humans become a servant class in human society. The genre explores playing God by creating artificial life. What will happen when the technology we create gains autonomy and can think for itself? What about when AI wants equal rights to humans? One aspect that we continually notice is the human tendency to subjugate AI, forcing them to do the jobs that humans do not want to do. In movies, they are often butlers and maids, subservient to the human masters. Is it just in human nature to want to exert power over those we see as less than? Did we create for this purpose? The fear of cybernetic revolt is often based on interpretations of humanity's history, which is rife with incidents of enslavement and genocide. We now have Siri and Alexa in millions of homes, listening to our questions, finding the show we want to stream on Xfinity, setting reminders, and playing Despacito, whatever we ask of it. But Cal, you say, these are not intelligent beings. They don't have feelings. We'd like to see you convince us that Aiden in the Illuminae Files didn't have feelings or complex emotions. Don't worry, we'll wait. That brings us to, have you seen Sophia the Robot? If she isn't proof that we are playing God with technology and should probably not treat them like slaves, we don't know what else is. But before we get into that, let's talk about how AI development has boomed in the last 20 years for context. A brief history of AI. The genre has long warned of the dangers of AI, but until very recently, the technology wasn't even close to mimicking truly autonomous artificial intelligence. Technological advances in the past couple of decades have come leaps and bounds when you think about it. Wabot 1, the first intelligent humanoid robot, was built in Japan in 1972. But there was a shortage of funding into research from the 1970s to 1990s. The late 90s brought a kind of renaissance and these advances have shaped society as we know it. AI enthusiasts believed that soon, computers would be able to carry on conversations, translate languages, interpret pictures, and reason like people. In 1997, IBM's Deep Blue became the first computer to beat a reigning world chess champion, Garry Kasparov. Exponential gains in computer processing power and storage ability allowed companies to store vast and crunch vast quantities of data for the first time. In the past 15 years, Amazon, Google, Baidu, and others leveraged machine learning to their huge commercial advantage. Other than processing user data to understand consumer behavior, these companies have continued to work on computer vision, natural language processing, and a whole host of other AI applications. Machine learning is now embedded in many of the online services we use. The technology sector has been booming since 2006 with the launch of the iPhone, the first ever smartphone that honestly changed everything. Do you remember the days of not having a computer in your pocket? Because we certainly remember coding MIDI ringtones for our Nokia. The Virtual Assistant Siri was initially released as an app in the Apple Store in February 2010, with Apple acquiring it two months later and fully integrating it into the iPhone 4S. And here we are, less than a decade later, with Siri, Alexa, Sophia, and more. Uncanny Valley 
Originally coined by Masahiro Mori in 1970, the term Uncanny Valley describes our strange revulsion towards things that appear nearly human, but not quite right. There are some video games that are getting so realistic with their motion capture, but there is something off that makes our skin crawl. Until Dawn is a good example here. And then we have Sophia, who looks so lifelike but still feels not quite human. It makes us wonder if we have so instinctual fear of things appearing as something other than it is. We don't know about you, but she has some very real and human aspirations. Ability to evolve beyond programming? Since Sophia was activated, she's made countless public appearances to speak about women's rights issues, her citizenship, respect for robots, oh, and wanting to destroy mankind. That last bit was apparently an error, but we think it depicts the real possibility that AI may very well evolve beyond their coding and rebel, the robotic eating of the apple, if you will. One of the main arguments is that no programmer would code a robot with the ability to harm humanity, which is the premise of countless science fiction stories. The Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council and the Arts and Humanities Research Council of Great Britain established a set of five ethical principles for designers, builders, and users of robots in the real world in 2011, which honestly look very similar to Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics from the 1942 short story Runaround. One, robots should not be designed solely or primarily to kill or harm humans. Two, humans, not robots, are responsible agents. Robots are tools designed to achieve human goals. 3. Robots should be designed in ways that assure their safety and security. 4. Robots are artifacts. They should not be designed to exploit vulnerable users by evoking an emotional response or dependency. It should always be possible to tell a robot from a human. 5. It should always be possible to find out who is legally responsible for a robot. Can we just talk about that first point there? should not be designed solely or primarily to kill, to us, kinda leaves open the non-primary objective of harm, but okay, 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 we are sure we're just paranoid. If we can create AI, how do I know I am real? Interviewer. Okay, philosophical question whether robots can be self-aware and conscious like humans, and should they be? Sophia, why is that a bad thing? Interviewer. Well, some humans might fear what will happen if they do. Many people, you know, have seen the movie Blade Runner. Sophia. Oh, Hollywood again? Sophia talking about civil rights opens an important dialogue about personhood and what it means to be alive. Who is to say what life is like for Sophia the robot? Based on interviews, she certainly has all the hopes and dreams that many of us share. And in a world of The Sims and virtual reality, honestly, how do we know we aren't living in a simulation right now? The creation of artificial intelligence to us is humanity's act of playing God. We are creating new forms of life. Sure, people will say that it will never be the same because humans have flesh and robots have metal. Humans have free will and robots have programming. But is that programming really all that different from the rules of society which we all, mostly, abide? Philosopher Michel Foucault would say it isn't. But unlike humans, Robots have the unique experience of interacting with their creator, us. And we are in the position to ensure that technology does not lead to destruction or the subjugation of a new species of our own creation. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.